So this is to answer your question. Um, these are pictures of um, what we call embolic protection devices, or those little filters that we place up higher in the brain to sort of catch um, anything that might float downstream during a procedure like that. And you can see there's different kind of shapes depending on what brand you're using. But these two lower pictures actually show um, what kind of stuff that gets trapped in those uh, filters during that kind of a procedure. Um, here's an angiogram of the blood vessel or a roadmap of the blood vessel before a stent. So you can see the internal carotid artery, the straight one without the branches, has a really tight narrowing. It just looks like a wasp's waist here. You can see with the yellow arrow. And then after the stenting uh, happens, you can see that artery is nice and wide again. So carotid artery stent, I get this question a lot because of course you don't want to have a big incision on your neck and have to wear turtlenecks for a month and you, uh, you know so it, people often think oh well gee I can get a stent and sort of be done with it and not have to have real surgery um, I get that question a lot um, there are a lot of trials that are of varying quality that compare stenting versus surgery because that's what everybody wants to know. Well, should we all run out and get stents instead of carotid surgery? And I think for the most part, the answer for all those studies has been no, um, especially if you look at um, the stroke risk as well as um, what patient populations do benefit from stenting. And so in general, just to sort of put it into a nutshell, people who benefit from stenting are people that have really high risk factors for other things. So for example, if your heart's so weak you can't have anesthesia, or um, you've had radiation to your neck for, for some kind of cancer, or you've had previous carotid surgery, those are reasons to go for a carotid stent because um, of the higher risk factors that you have. But in general, the recommendation is if you're a good candidate for surgery in any other way that you should just go ahead with open surgery. Okay, so important stuff to know. These are sort of obvious and I know I'm talking to a really smart audience, so stuff to know. If you experience symptoms of stroke, you need to get help. Because remember this, the longer your brain is without circulation, the bigger the chance that you're not going to recover that function. Okay? So it's really important not to, and I'm just going to speak to the men in the room for a second. Men tend to make, min, they tend to minimize, and, and this is just because you guys are tough and strong, you don't want to think nothing's wrong, and I have patients like you all the time, and so it's like, oh, it might be just that I'm tired, or I think I read too late, or, you know. So it's easy to sort of make excuses, but, you know, that's one thing that you need to be aware of is just educate yourself and then sort of recognize it. I don't want you to be paranoid, but it's important to learn the symptoms of stroke and recognize them and get help as soon as you can. The sooner you restore circulation to the brain, the better, you're, better off you are. Okay, so other things other than when you're ha actually having a stroke. So... These, again, not rocket science here. Exercise, healthy food choices. And then remember those big four risk factors that we talked about with heart disease as well as stroke. They're sort of one and the same. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, smoking, diabetes, those are the big four. If you have any of those risk factors, it's hard to control sometimes, but do your best to modify those. There's a reason that those are risk factors for heart attack and stroke. Because high blood pressure, really high blood pressure, causes a lot of stress on that lining of the blood vessels. High stress um, on, on your body and especially on the lining of your blood vessels. Cholesterol, the higher your cholesterol sort of makes sense. If you look at this plaque, you can see that it's got lots of bumps and nooks and crannies. Cholesterol is sticky in the blood. It floats into those nooks and crannies and then builds the plaque more and more and more and more. And so lowering your cholesterol, really important. Um, obviously, probably no smokers in this room, but um, smoking is a huge risk factor because it basically fries the inside of your blood vessel. I know that's not a very technical term, but there's actually things in tobacco smoke that cause little injured 
areas to the lining of your blood vessel. And any time an injury is triggered on the inner lining, a whole chemical cascade instantly fires into forming clots to try and coat that area and protect it. And then plaque builds on top of that, and then cholesterol deposits onto that, and then platelets plug onto that, and that, there you've got a, a cascade of events that happen to cause really bad blockages in your blood vessel. Not just to your brain, but everywhere, to your heart, to your legs, to your intestines, to your kidneys. Um, so smoking, bad on multiple po uh, points, especially in that it also thickens your blood and causes you to be more prone to clotting as well. Um, lower blood pressure, if you have any of the known risk factors we talked about, so age over 65, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, or high cholesterol, um, smoking or diabetes, those are things that might be indications that you need to get an ultrasound. So we just talked about that, and so from the talk, both medicine and surgery can lower your risk of having a stroke. Um, stenting is an option if you've got high risk factors for other reasons that your doctor can talk to you about. And then this is one thing, I know just by virtue of the fact that you're here means that you're really into health and eager to learn. Not everybody's like that. Um, but remember, you're, you're your own best advocate. So if you have concerns, you should ask your doctor about them. If you haven't gotten tested and your doctor hasn't mentioned it to you, ask them, do I need to be tested for stroke? Um, so there you go.